really like to talk to you about um, mindful. Why, why, why is uh, why is trust so important right now? Is what I'm talking about. There. Why is trust so important right now? Now I was having a a, a dinner with, uh, with with my partner. We were having a healthy supper, and we were having a healthy conversation about uh, working from home. And my partner said she works from home. I work from home, of course. We all do now. Everyone's working from home, and we were having a sort of a a ding dong battle about you know the pros and cons of working from home, and then we reckon that as long as you've got a laptop, a brain, and cloud computing, then you can work from home and do it really well. But the real debate came about though is if uh, what, what do you use to contact clients? Do you use Zoom and video technology like we're using here now, or do you use the telephone? Now, Shelley's a big fan of the phone, always has been. I'm a big fan of video and always have been, so we were talking about it. But Shelley made a very good point. She said, Look, Paul, she said. When I talk to my clients, I've got a huge brand behind me. Now, Shelley works for a large organisation and she has got a brand that's behind her that when she mentions who she is from this company, immediately she's got the trust. So she doesn't need to be face to face in a video situation to build rapport and all those things because she's got this huge brand. And I get that. And, and the likes of um, the Nationwide Building Society have got a big brand. Virgin Money have got a big brand, although some people that's, think that's uh, not doing so well in lockdown. Um, Prudential. These are all big brands. Which you mention the name and people think, ah, oh, I can relax because I trust them. You, know, you watch the BBC for your news. You trust it. Trust is really important now. But if you're a smaller organisation, you don't have that. But if you've got a big brand like Nationwide, you can spend your money on artificial intelligence. You can do chatbots, which are arty orientated, because people trust the brand. You know, they go onto a website, an app which is Nationwide on there, and it does your mortgage for you without talking to a human. You trust it because of the brand. But your small broker, you don't have that. So you're going to have to work really hard on building trust. And here's a few just reminders for you to be able to do that for you. The first thing you want to do is to sprinkle um, all over social media your brand. So you do want to maximise social media. Don't be silly about it. Don't start using it for personal purposes. I'm not talking about that. But sprinkle all around social media your brand, your credibility. So your LinkedIn profile needs to be fully occupied with all, all, all things about you. You need to maybe have a blog with articles that you write about topics. Your YouTube, get a YouTube channel going with videos about who you are and what you're about because people will look onto social media to find you and to search your brand. That's a key thing there when it comes to brand as well. Um, if you're going to use Zoom or, or Teams or whatever it is to talk to clients, um, think about your background. I saw one the other day and what the advisor had done is she put all her certificates on the back wall. Uh, it was a real wall, obviously, and she put all her certificates of all her exams and things that she passed. Oh, that's quite nice. Um, one person I saw had, had taken a photograph, put that behind as a Zoom virtual background, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, if you start pulling the wool over these eyes by having you know, this great big office photograph in the background on the Zoom virtual, I think that's just going over the top. I think people will see between the lines on that one. So don't go over the top with that one. Um, make sure you have your testimonials as well. People, we, we, we've done this one to death, haven't we? People know that uh, you know you search for reviews on things when you buy stuff. Of course you do, and we know that. But testimonials you should have in third-party websites as a mortgage advisor. Um, think about um, vouched for, not bad one, unbiased.co.uk. That's a really good one as well. Um, there's another one I've read about called um, financiable.co.uk. That's financiable.co.uk. Where you put all your testimonials on there, people can go and search those as well. But put them on your website if you need to as well. Or on your social media. Um, that's a good place to put it on your Facebook profile, your Instagram, where your customers are maybe, they need to find that out as well. Um, you do need to nail the three secrets to trust. Um, the three secrets to trust, of course, the, the first one is, is common ground, um, matching, mirroring, um, building up um, a contact with people that way. If you're on video, make sure that you match and mirror the customer's voice facial expressions, eye contact, 
Um, I've got lots of videos on matching and mirroring the NLP technique there for you, which is a very, very useful thing to think about. So definitely get common ground going with people as well. Um, make sure that you that the customer knows what your intentions are. That's the second secret to, to trust. Make sure they know what your intentions are. So make sure you sign posts where you're talking to the customer, your, your meetings have an agenda. You sign posts what you're going to do and how you operate, what your sales process looks like. People don't want any surprises at all. So that's, that's the two secrets. The third one, of course, is competence. In other words, make sure people know that you know what to talk about. So you've got credibility, examinations, and those sort of things is really important. Um, and the final one, really, is to make sure that you become a master communicator. That's the key to the future, because artificial intelligence engines will give people advice, but they won't be able to communicate properly with people. You will. So you need to be a really good communicator. Uh, be you on video or Zoom, whatever it is, make sure you can communicate with people really well, listen well, summarise well, engage with them properly. You've got to be a masterful communicator. And that in itself builds up trust massively. So when I was saying, if you don't have a big brand behind you, then you've got to work on your trust. It's as simple as that. I'm not saying that even if you've got a big brand behind you, you don't have to work on trust because a personal trust needs to come in. But you do have a hell of, hell of a head start if you've got like the Nationwide or Virgin behind you or Santander, something like that. Because people generally trust those organisations. Although trust itself can be lost, just take a look at Dominic Cummings. But uh, we won't talk about that.